Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I wanna to show you guys how I would set up my Linux editing laptop. So let's get started. On my last video, Juno Computers actually sent me over the Neptune 15, which is a very powerful computer, especially for editing. So I decided to edit my last video on this computer, but I did have to set it up. So here's a time lapse of the incomplete process, but I will actually go through everything so you can see what I'm talking about. To begin, uh, you're gonna notice that this, this is still GNOME and Ubuntu, but I just kind of changed the orientation a little bit by using dash to panel. So this looks like more of a window-esque task manager, and I like, how this works i just find it a little bit more productive than having like a little dock or something like that but a lot of people you know swear by the dock which is fine i just like my style i'm, I'm so used to this and i'm very comfortable in this arrangement so to begin um i was using arc menu and i've used arc menu for a very long time but as of recently the developer decided to stop developing arc menu and that's because there's too many updates and it's very hard for him to keep up he's really actually not enjoying it anymore so he stopped development on the arc menu so that kind of forced me to, you know, kind of use something else. So in the meantime, I'm using the default GNOME application menu, which I'm starting to like because it allows for extensions. So going down the list, uh, yes, one, I'm using dash to panel, which is this little bar in the bottom. I am using the regular application menu. Um, I set this up so I have my little favorites and also you're able to see the actual task. Here I have my CPU uh, controller or CPU frequency controller where you can enable, disable uh, frequency boost as well as how many cores you wanna use and also your power state or your profile. Uh, then we have OBS and then we have Steam. Those I just turned on, but again, th that's uh, my little um, system tray over here. On this side, this is where we have the fan controller um, from Juno Computers, so we could actually adjust it. He also has the keyboard control to change the lights and everything, but I disabled it for now because once I set the color, I don't need to keep going back and forth, so I just left it as is. We also have my time, the Wi-Fi or whatever my system indicators, audio, mic, and actually my power menu here. And that's it for my little task menu on the bottom. I did change the settings a little bit so the icons are a little bit smaller and the gap between um, the icons over here are a little bit tight. So tray items over here, you could change the padding to four. If I left it at zero, it's actually pretty big gap, which I don't like. So I do change it over to four and that's about it. And then everything else is just a smaller icon. So if I go to style, you can see my panel size is 32 instead of 48 as default. Now moving on, as far as my application goes, uh, one of the extensions that I did put in is actually called select prime or select um, dedicated graphic card. And I'll show you guys the extension in Firefox in a second, but what you can do with it is actually right click on any item and you can launch with dedicated graphic card. Because this has an Intel and also a 2060 RTX in here, uh, I'm mainly using my Intel for the actual utilization of the computer, but the RTX could be activated this way so I could play games and stuff like that. So if I needed to use DaVinci Resolve or jump into Steam, I would need to use the dedicated graphic card option so I could play it on the RTX 2060. So with that being said, let's, let's go over our extensions and see what we have over here. Let's go to tweaks and we'll go down the list. General, I have nothing here, just normal. Appearance, I did change it to the stock Euro dark theme. So this is gnome dark. So it's not like any extra theme that I put in. It's just the regular dark theme for uh, for GNOME. Wallpaper, I actually got from Wallpaper Flare and this is probably the second one on the list right now. You probably see me use this a lot of times. And everything else I left as default uh, other than the dark theme. Now, as far as extension goes, there's this one effect that you guys were asking about, which is this wobbly window, which is called the Compass Windows effect. This is an extension. It doesn't install Compass in there, but it's an extension that allows for the wobbly windows. I wish they actually had the minimized, like uh, the Genie, you know, the minimized Genie, but I, I didn't find it. But yeah, the Windows effect is good. Dash to panel we were talking about. Desktop icons I do have. Uh, Gnome to run with Prime, that's the extension. That's what it's called, Gnome run with Prime. And that's the one where you can right click and actually enable the dedicated graphic card on each application. Uh, Ubuntu app indicator I don't use, or the Ubuntu dock, that's the old stuff. Uh, the user themes is on and also CPU frequency. That's the that's this thing that you see on the bottom right. As far as fonts, everything is left as default. Keyboard and mouse, I left as default. Startup applications, I don't have anything. Top bar, I don't have, again. Windows title bar, I did not change other than allowing for maximize and minimize. 
uh, windows I didn't change anything here and workspaces I also didn't change so the only thing that you see change is the appearance and extensions those were the things I added now as far as apps go for myself that I use for editing is mainly audacity is for audio I would extend clips or stuff like that if I needed some sort of audio uh, I don't use it as much because DaVinci Resolve actually has their own little audio thing but I do keep audacity around if I do need to record like a quick sound effects or something uh, we have Re DaVinci Resolve which is uh, the studio version Epic Games if I want to play some games and I did just recently upload a video on how to install Epic Games on Linux so be sure to check out my gaming channel which I will have that tutorial up because I did have a tutorial on how to install Lutris did a tutorial how to install Steam so now it's for the Epic Game Launcher uh, moving down uh, we have OBS well obvious because I do screen capture and I'm using it right now to record this screen capture uh, this program which I also have a video for which is called Photo Gimp it's like a Photoshop but with GIMP but it retains all the hotkeys and all that stuff so you're familiar with Photoshop and you memorize the hotkeys like control D will be deselect or something like that that is all applied to photo GIMP so I'm actually more familiar in using uh, GIMP this way because I've used Photoshop for so long moving down the list uh, I also have Steam which is uh, you know that Steam game launcher uh, Visual Studio Code I have WinFF. WinFF is an amazing program if you guys haven't heard it. It's actually like a decoder for any format. So basically you could add all your video files here by hitting the add button. So whatever you got over here. And then you could convert them and push them out to whatever format you want. This is a huge program for me. Instead of having to use FFmpeg every single time, WinFF will actually do everything for me through one shot so I don't have to remember what the whole FFmpeg line is okay then moving down uh, Remina is the updated version because I always use remote desktop on Remina and Visual Studio Code I think I just mentioned that before and that's what I use to write down my quick Python codes or anything that has to do with coding as far as uh, some other programs I might not have installed or I might have forgot which is Flameshot Flameshot is, is an application to allow me to capture the screen or take screenshots and stuff like that so that's another program I usually use which I didn't don't have on this guy right now ultimately I got my video editor uh, my graphic editor which is PhotoGimp, DaVinci Resolve and my audio which is Audacity but now I've evolved into using uh, DaVinci Resolve Studio so those are the main programs that I would edit out a video then coding wise is VS Code and Notepad you know obviously or whatever uh, text editor there is and then for gaming I either use Epic Game Launcher or Steam mostly Steam but the Epic Game Launcher now have so many free games that I've been playing actually the Railroad Tycoon no not Railroad Tycoon sorry Roller Coaster Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. That is it for this setup. I gotta say, uh, I'm gonna put up the benchmarking scores right here for both Tomb Raider and for the Uni Engine Superposition. So, for the past week that I've been using this, it's very, very comfortable. Now, this is more of a desktop laptop than it is an actual laptop. To put this on your lap, you might even heat up your legs or something like that. But for our desktop laptop, it's actually very comfortable. The keys have a good travel, so I'm not. I don't have any problems with typing on this guy. The fan noise is really, really low. Throughout the whole time I was editing the video and scrubbing timelines, I was not getting any fan noise. The only time I actually hit the fan noise was when I was exporting using either CPU or the graphic card. And mind you, that video that I edited last week only took me about 40 something seconds on the graphic card and 50 something seconds on the CPU. So it was, it's fast to export something with, with all the edits and all the color corrections and everything. It was, it did it really fast. Now, as far as gaming goes, it does kick up the fan as soon as you go into any game. Battery life, like I said in the video, I was getting about five to six hours and I am actually getting five to six hours. Um, normal usage, like browsing the web, watching some YouTube, maybe do a quick little edit here and there, but not really playing any games or anything. If you're going to play games, plug it in. And yeah, that's about it. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys got any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out and as i say in my nerd cave hack till it hurts